Hey guys, welcome in a new episode of Stephen's Week, your weekly update on marketing and technology. This week, I'm going to talk about the battle between uh, Facebook and the Australian government. I'm going to talk about a new step for TikTok. I'm going to talk about the new legislation that will change Chinese e-commerce and a boom in wearable technologies. Welcome in this new episode. The Chinese government will imply a new rule, a new law for e-commerce companies. And in China, to give you an idea, the e-commerce market is valued at 2.8 trillion US dollars. So it's huge. And the largest players, players are companies like JD and Alibaba. And now there's a new law coming where um, these companies will have to become more transparent about the transactions that they have. Um, and there are also new rules about how to promote products. Like they're not going to be allowed, for instance, to push positive review, reviews in favor of negative reviews. So they will have to be more transparent about that. They will also have to implement a philosophy where users have to consent that their personal data is being used on the platform and across the platforms of that owner. Um, and they're going to have to be transparent. So they will have to share all the transactions um, with the government. And the goal is to reduce the power of the big e-commerce platforms like Alibaba and JD. They want to create more opportunities for others in the market. And because of this new legislation, um, Alibaba and JD will have to change their strategy, strategy because it's based on these principles of collecting data and about promoting products in a, in a you know, less transparent way. So this is changing their model. So it's going to be interesting in the next couple of years to see how they will change if they are possible to change and how it will create opportunities for other players in the market. Um, TikTok announced that they will create more opportunities for personalized advertisement based on your behavior on TikTok. They will be able to send certain ads that you know, are in line with your interests. Um, they will implement this globally, except for uh, the European Union, because of GDPR, they have to be more careful and more reluctant here. But in the rest of the world, they're going to apply these new algorithms for advertising. And I understand why, because race, uh, recent research just showed that 75% of the largest advertisers in the world is looking for advertising opportunities on TikTok, of course, because it's popularity, because of the interest in demographics. And, and about 40% of the advertisers is looking to invest more in the short term on TikTok. In one of the previous episodes, I talked about the conflict um, of Facebook with the government in Australia. Uh, the government in Australia created a law where Facebook has to pay the media companies in the country for journalism that they publish on their platform. And as you know, many of the news articles are being shared on Facebook. It's the biggest traffic generator for newspapers um, to, to get as many people as possible on their platform. So the government said Facebook has to pay for that because they can use that content and so on and so on. Facebook became angry, so Facebook dropped a bomb and said, we are not allowing any Australian journalism anymore on Facebook. So they were blocked from the platform. That was unseen. It was a very severe measure of Facebook. But now behind the scenes, they have been talking. There were a lot of conversations. And now this week, Facebook announced that they will pay the Australian media companies when they publish newspaper articles. And I think that many governments in many countries will look with great interest to that legislation and see if they can apply that as well in their, in their markets. And this will create probably a new kind of relationship between content creators, professional content creators like publishers are, media companies are, and Facebook that you know is very important for them as a traffic generator, but still Facebook needs them to have content. So they need each other and probably this balancing act is going to be high on the agenda in more and more governments in the next couple of months. Another consequence of the pandemic is the rise of wearable technology. In the past 12 months, uh, wearables it just exploded. There was a growth of 28% um, last year. 444 million devices were shipped. It's a wonderful figure, 444 million were shipped, were sold. Apple has the largest part of that market. They have about 36% of, uh, of the wearable market in the, in the new sales. 
Um, but it's crazy to see, yeah, because of the pandemic, we changed our behavior. Some people start to work out more, others created new hobbies, but all of us were more attached to a digital lifestyle. And apparently then consumers want to create more opportunities and get more services and collect data about their own uh, life more than ever before. And because of that, we saw this major growth in wearable technology. So guys, this was my weekly update. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, share it, subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you again next week for a new episode of Stevens Week. Take care and enjoy the weekend, everyone. Bye-bye.